Hey Carfathers, this video is going to be a little bit different than your typical video as instead of the usual information style video, I want to do a more personal topic. The reason why I want to do that is that we're almost hitting the 5k subscriber number on the channel and that's pretty big and I want to celebrate that as well as give something back to you guys for supporting me in a big way. So what I want to do is when we're hitting that milestone, I want to do a special 5k subscriber Q&A where I'm going to answer any type of question. Might it be Vanguard related or more personal related? Basically anything that you're wondering about me. So how can you get your question features on the special? Well, it's actually pretty easy. You either go to the comment section below this video and ask your question right there. Or you can follow me on Twitter at MrTimeLeap. I use the hashtag AskMrTimeLeap so I can find your question online and... Who knows, it might be featured on the upcoming Q&A special. But today's video is an example question that I want to highlight about my personal favorite decks that I've played over the years of playing Vanguard. To give context to the time frame that I started playing Vanguard, I started playing Vanguard around the early years of the GRA, about GBT 056-ish, when Time Leap was just making its rounds in the meta. And of course, that was the first era that I played, and now the V era is the second era that I played. So you're probably not going to see a lot of things from way back with Limit Break, Legion, Break Ride, all those kinds of stuff, as I never experienced that time and I, depending on who you ask that might be a good thing or that might be a bad thing. So I want to split this up in my top three favorite decks during the G era and during the current V era. So to kick this list off with the V era my number three spot is going to Gear Chronicle. And it might sound weird to some of you people, especially as I proclaim myself as a Gear Chronicle main, as well as my nickname that I is Mr. Time Leap, might be weird that I'm putting it only on the third spot. The reason that it's on the first spot is that I'm still enjoying it a lot, that's why it's in my top three. But this issue that I have with the current uh, iteration of the Gear Chronicle cards in the Viera is that it's fun to play, it's really amusing to trying to make the deck work, but that's also the little bit issue, it's very inconsistent. You have only one grade three that you can rely on, so you're basically running a four, four grade three deck, and that's not really that consistent. And as well, your stride cards or your grade fours, you need to set them up really effectively, otherwise they don't really do that much. And in a sense that you can get them really quickly uh, active and you can get your stuff uh, active really soon and really fast sometimes it's just not enough and then you're going deck out really quickly and you just die against protect matchup and that's also a big thing you lose against protect matchup quite often and with a high percentage as you don't really have something to go to have a work around those protect markers as it's just three big numbers and because you're drawing a lot you're filtering out your grade fours from your deck as well as triple driving uh, attacks you're going pretty pretty quickly for a deck and you're going faster deck out than oracle think tank and that says a lot so that's why it's only on number three but still it's a very fun deck and i believe that we only need one or two good cards and then the deck is consistent enough to do some splashes in the meta. But besides that, it's a really fun deck to play as it's really cra crazy with all the interactions that you can do. And getting that extra turn off feels so good, even though nine out of 10 times it doesn't do anything actually to progress the game at all. So for my number two spot for the reboot, I am picking Oracle Think Tank. During the Jira, I always wanted to play a CEO Amaterasu build and I always was tinkering around with the Legion uh, option that was available, but besides that, it never really came to fruition as Oracle Think Tank was a laughing stock during the Jira, except for when Stillwater was out. So when it was announced for the reboot that Oracle Think Tank's one of the great trees that are getting right at the get-go was CEO Amaterasu, I was completely sold right there. Even though at the time everybody was calling it that Nova Grappler were gonna be the top dog because Axel was really broken on paper and protect, well, you get a Sentinel, that's pretty much trash. So yeah, Oracle Think Tank is gonna get, again, the laughing stock of the reboot. So, but I didn't care. I just, I, I proclaimed, I'm gonna play that. I don't care anymore. It's it's finally a CRM Terasu and it's in the current meta or at least in the current set. So I can immediately play it and maybe it's viable. 
Well, lo hold and behold, apparently it was top meta. Even till this day, it's still in the current top spot with the crazy amount of consistency that the deck has. And I'm still loving the deck in a general, the way that you have so much control about the pace of the game, as well as planning out your turns about two to three turns ahead is something that I really like. I like that chess aspect of, the, of their current playstyle as you're trying to put your opponent in an awkward spot while you're building up your resources. And although a lot of people give the clan hate or the players that play the clans, or especially the mirror match, Oracle Think Tank against Oracle Think Tank, a lot, of, a lot of people call it boring, but in my personal opinion, it's one of the more interesting matchups to play as you're really... You're really playing a chess game against a good... If you're playing against a good other Oracle Think Tank player. And I've played some of these matches. And they're one of the most toughest matches in, in general. As you're both super consistent. And you can fix a lot of things. And the one that's making the little mistake. Or the one that can capitalize on the little, little advantages. Is going to win that game. And when they do... It's really amazing when you're playing at that high competitive level again in the mirror match itself. In that aspect, I really like about the Oracle Think Tank deck. We currently have a standard and that's why it's on my number two spot. But for my number one spot uh, for the V-Series, the standard is undoubtedly going to Pill Moon. I really, really like this deck. I love the way that it works. All the little interactions, the combo plays, everything about the deck is really amazing. And I'm of course referring to the Golden Beast Tamer build that came out with AO4 and with the little support that we got in Phyllis the Leader. But the way that you're ha you basically have endless possibilities, endless combos. And although a lot of people are giving the deck not a lot of credits. I see a lot of people saying that it's inconsistent, it doesn't really do much, and it's one damage trigger and it's done like every other Axel deck. Honestly, that's not really the case if you're piloting Peel Moon in the right way that it's supposed to be piloted. You can see that a lot with high level players that a damage trigger is easily circumvented. You can change your combos midway, adapt to it and overcome with higher numbers, as well as all the different things you can Enter your field quite effectively to uh, cancel or counter uh, retire clans. And you have all these crazy interactions and options to be available. You can go early rush, you go, can go a mid-tier rush. The consistency issue can be a problem, but when, once you start playing the deck and you start to learn to deal with these issues with bad soul charging cards, maybe that you're soul charging a lot of triggers or that, that kind of situation. When you're getting the hang of the deck, even in those situations, you can make it work. There are a lot of ways that you can make the deck deadly as hell. And there are a lot, of, basically anybody that I've played against with Pill Moon doesn't, <laughs> they don't like the deck at all. Because they're getting hit for 10, 12 attacks right out of the gate. And they're like, this, this is unfair. This is so unfair. And in a sense, yes, it is unfair. But again, you need... To be very experienced and know what you're doing to get that high level playability out of the clan. And I like that fact that it's really skill intensive. And it reminds me a little bit of the old days of Time Leap. As Time Leap had that same thing about it's very combo heavy. But it can also work around unexpected things like a damage trigger. It can alter the combos mid combo. And that's really something that I like that I have different varieties and different ways to maneuver during the different stages of the battlefield or in during the battle and that's really what I dig about the clan itself. On to the Jira. My number three spot is a shared position between two decks as I cannot really uh, decide which I want which I like a little bit more and that's between the old blade wing dark regulars build where you're all about the blade wing stride and the blade wing uh, grade 3 to Sullivan T-Build where you're just stalling, stalling, stalling and going for late game. However, my build was a little bit different as at the time I added two copies of Steel Vampire and that was basically my finisher for the unexpected surprise when my opponent didn't knew what was coming and they have a grade 0 on the field or a grade 1, plays that thing, all the G-Guards are nullified, then I go stride into Gilderay and basically swing for a 56 attack, potentially 56 attack with a crit. They cannot guard with it, basically anything except, except for triggers and they're sitting at a low powered Vanguard and I go for game for right there. And I really dig that deck as it's, it's like Oracle Think Tank, you need to plan a couple of turns in ahead as you're not going to do a lot of pressure and 
you're gonna stall for a long game and that's something that I like to have a more chess-like feeling that my plays four turns ago matter in the way that I played them out. But the deck that's competing for the third spot is the is the Vanquisher Narukami build. I really liked it a lot. There, It's a very interesting approach to the control aspect of what Kagero gave to the game, but I like the way that Narukami is actually building up to something. You're doing it for a reason to accelerate your ex uh, Thunder Strike numbers. And the whole aesthetic of the Thunder Dragons, I liked it a lot more. Especially at the time that I picked up the deck, was before it's, it, it just came after the VMAX support. So it still wasn't really that great. It was a rogue strategy at best, but it countered to very active meta decks. There was Grand Blue and Luard. And... I made a lot of Luart <laughs> players cry at regionals as they didn't like the way that I robbed them of the ritual all the time. And I like I really like that <laughs> to just undermine meta meta decks with a non-meta competitive uh, strategy. And the deck is overall has a fun uh, aspect with their playability around the Thunderstrike engine. And that's I, it's something that I really found. And I'm very curious if we're ever gonna get a new support in that as well. So for my number two during the G era, that's going to the Neonectar Romunculus Arshas deck. Undoubtedly one of my favorite decks of all time, even now, to play. It's around the same level that I did like Pill Moon right now in standard. As like Pill Moon, it had so many interactions and combos to play. The Bloom engine was really amazing i like the way i like i played the deck with the katrina with the furia and i started off with green shot elf but when the uh, second wave support with searing heart came in i added the noel card that can attack from the back row and all those arsha strides and all those crazy interactions that you could do you can try to make three giant columns you can go for a more spread out, spread out attack with potentially five to six attacks when you attack with the back row all these different kinds of things was really awesome about it. And also the aesthetic and the art design of these cards are really beautiful. And it's just like Pill Moon that you're trying to build something. You are you have some cards to your availability. You have some cards available to you. And from those cards, you're trying to get the best situation as possible. In Pill Moon's case, you're trying to multi tech as much as possible for the least amount of resources. In Asha's Bloom case, you're trying to generate as much Bloom skills as possible with the cards that you have and still have some left to defend in your next turn. And I, bas I just really dig that design and the way that you can make all these crazy Bloom combos where you have potentially 16 Blooms or maybe even 20 in some cases. I believe my max record was... 26 blooms if not more and i the highest number that i could generate was in 156k katrina so that was pretty damn pretty damn high that was before the last support wave i stopped playing that deck when the fantastic bloom arsha came, the fantastic arsha came out uh, i still i have fixed the cards themselves so i have the uh, blue arshas but I didn't really like the deck anymore at the time as it was very generic, one-dimensional with the with this GR stride and the resist grade 2. That's basically you attack, everything gets crits, you attack, attack, crits, and that's about it. And you do not you don't really do those crazy combos that you have with uh, Selafina and Romunculus in Bloom Arsha and all those crazy cards. That basically disappeared from the deck, and that's why I didn't play it at that point. The, my favorite deck in the Jira, and this is undoubtedly the favorite deck that I've played in all, as seen as the Arsha deck was on par with the favorite deck that I'm playing currently in Standard. And that's none other than Gear Chronicles Time Leap. And yes, I know a lot of people start disliking the video right now as they heard the word Time Leap. But besides the, of course, the bad side of it with meta that it basically almost destroyed the GRO meta, the deck itself is really fun to play. As as stated before, like like Pill Moon, you had your crazy combos as well as control over your combos. When your opponent gets a defensive trigger, you can change your directive mid combo and do something else. And the awesome part about the deck was that there wasn't one single build that was viable. You had all crazy combinations with different grade 2s, different grade 3s. My build that I used to pilot, and I sadly didn't get top 8, but I got 2-3 times in regionals, got the bubble right 
under the top eight, so I got ninth. I have placed tenth. I've placed thirteenth with the deck, and my build was I had the elite four in it, but instead of the uh, square one grade three and only four chrono jets, my build was four chrono jets and four chrono jet G's, and I used those three, those two chrono jets in tandem with each other against different matchups. So if I went against Shadow Paladin, I would go back to the old Chrono Jet as clearing their field hurts them more than just putting out power on my field. And when I go against a clan that doesn't have a field like Tachikaze or Grand Blue, then I go to G and fix them out with that play. And not only that, I usually go rewrite mid-battle constantly to a different Chrono Jet to have some extra advantage. If I see my opponent has still one rearguard left, even though I'm not sitting on G, I sometimes rewrite back and go to Chrono Jet, then use stride skill, put it back, and all these different interactions that I have available and all the different playability that I had. I could go for the time leap build, for the time leap combos, but I could go also a more aggressive approach with higher columns instead of multi-tacking pokes. And that's what I really liked about the deck, as it was the more it was also the the most more personal build that I played as I have never seen anybody else playing that exact build in the way that I did, so it felt more unique to me as a player and as a Gear Chronicle main, that really meant something to me. Just the aesthetic about Gear Chronicle, I like the designs, I like the playability, I like the way that you have all these endless possibilities and that's why it's basically my favorite deck of all times. There is one honorable mention that I want to talk about and that's the rewind build of Gear Chronicle. That was my very first deck that I ever made, built and played. Really fun. It's nowhere near competitive viable at all, even when I played the deck, but I still had a lot of fun with it. And I could even compete with meta decks at the time, because I basically beat a Link Joker Messiah deck that was top tier at the time. But because of a stupid thing that I did, I didn't win that match. If you want to know that, what the story about is, you can ask it in the comments. Maybe I address it in the Q&A. That basically rounds up to my favorite decks of the G era as well as the V era. So let me know in the comments down below what your favorite decks are as well as the questions you want me to answer during the upcoming 5k subscriber special Q&A. Or go to Twitter, follow me at Twitter at MrTimeLeap to answer you, to get your questions right answered right there. I want to thank my new supporter over Patreon, Priest, as well as a lot of old supporter, John Edmondson. You guys make a big difference in supporting this channel in the way that we can do things right here. If you too want to support the channel, then head over to patreon.com slash insider and become a Patreon today. But that's all for me today. I'm MrTimeLeap and I'll see you guys in the next one.